This is the Mermaid Paper Doll set. These are all dies so that you can put them through the die cutter and these are stamps. There are different faces, hair, a little accessory <laughs> with a little bikini top and a seahorse. Just in case you're not aware, die cuts are used with a die cutter. There's lots and lots of different brands. I have my own, which is mermaid themed, of course. And all you do is uh, wind your dies placed over what you want to cut just, and in between a little sandwich of plates and the machine does all the precision work for you. All you need to do is uh, place the various plates down and there's a recipe on the platform itself. They're super easy to use die cutters. And once you start rocking and rolling with one, it's just, it's just so much fun. It's quite relaxing. Uh, and all you need to do is work out which bit of the paper, which design you want. So I've got some scrap watercolour paper where I was just doing watercolour um, painting. Um, it's actually the very first time I used my watercolour sets, like from the very first sample when they came back with my little logo on them. So it's really nice to be able to use <laughs> scrap pieces of paper uh, in another project. So they deserve to be turned into a mermaid for sure. So I'm just showing you that I just take a little bit of time, work out exactly where I want to place everything. Uh, on the other mermaids that I showed you at the beginning of the video, I mainly used the paper from the Jane Davenport paper pad feels so weird to refer to myself as a something else but it's the uh, paper pad with pages from my journals in them i also like to use vintage papers you can use wood veneer which i'll show you in a moment anything that can go through and not damage your cutter is going to be just fine or what you think might look nice as a mermaid so i'm just taking that time putting my dies down I might try and sneak in a few from another set and then once you're ready, you just place your second plate down and pop it through the machine. If I'm using thin paper, I will often use washi tape or just a low tack type of tape to um, affix the die cuts down onto the paper just so they don't move around. But if I'm using watercolor paper, like I'm using here, they do settle into the paper and I can uh, wind my plates through a few times to really make sure they cut through those um, those thicker papers. Sometimes I've got acrylic paint and fabric stuck on and collage and this and that and I've got quite the sandwich going on. So I like to just, you know, go through a fair few times just so that die cut can actually get right down and chop out every little detail. Also using a book binding awl just to help release the papers from the dies and if there are any little intricate details like the scales again I just tap 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 with that and that uh, release the all will just pop the little extra bits and pieces out and then once you've <laughs> done all of your cutting I say once you've got your die cutter out just keep on going until you've chopped up all the scrap paper and then you've got lots and lots of lovely little things to play with whenever you feel the need to have a little bit of extra mermaidness in an art journal, in your paper crafting, card making, artwork, whatever it is that you love doing. On the screen I've got a selection of mermaids that I've already made up and I've got all the little bits and pieces that I need to make a few more. I create all of my dies with spellbinders and they are famous for their intricate, really beautifully made dies. And I just love this feature. So I knew I wanted a mermaid's tail with scales and clever Frank, he worked out how to do this. So if the die is in two pieces, so you can either create it, so you've got a layered effect like this, or you can create the mermaid's tail so it all cuts out in one piece. So you can have a solid tail, or you can have the tail with just the uh, scallops, or you can lay the two over the top of each other so you get that beautiful contrast. You can also see in the mermaids that I've made already 
I've got little those little dots there. They are paper brads or paper fasteners. You can get really teeny tiny ones. Uh, you can get skin coloured ones, bright coloured ones, all sorts of passion ones. <laughs> and you can play around with that. You can also paint them uh, at the end and make them a different colour. So I've got a little set of neutral coloured mini brads. And I'm just attaching the arms attaching the head at the neck you can decide which way around the hands will be uh, they look a bit odd if they're around the wrong way so you'll be able to tell pretty much straight away that they're not quite right uh, but that's up to you uh, you can uh, decide whether you want to attach them behind the body or in front of the body same as with the neck uh, and then also you're going to piece together the torso, attach it to the tail, and then attach the fin to the bottom of the tail as well. And those two points will hold down the scales to the solid body fin part, if that is what you want to do. You can also get a little bit creative with what you put through your die cutting machine. I mean, don't go too creative, but I've put through some thin sheets of wood veneer and these make terrific little mermaids, especially for the body parts where there's skin, because wood is neutral coloured and that's the same as us. So you can get beautiful tones and it's got a little bit of variation in there, which is going to look nice when representing a human because we have variation in our skin tone with shading. The hair piece has actually got that little slit there so this the head can slip up into that and uh, you've got the little hairdo you can change the shape of the hairdo you can there's also a stamp there to add some texture to it and I'll show you that in a second but once you've got a little hairdo on there I find it quite easy just to put a little bit of tape you can glue it down as well a little bit of tape on there and it will just hold the hairdo on there in place because if the hair slides down a bit, it does look a bit odd. But if you'd like to use the stamp that comes with the set, I'm using the archival squid ink from my set that is also a mermaid scale, how appropriate. Just popping that down on the piece and then attaching it to my little mermaid once the ink is dry. I'm going to use that wood veneer piece Oh, very nice. And then I can also stamp her face. You can also get a little bit creative and use some of the dies from my other sets. I've got the Tentalicious die set here that I've cut out again with beautiful watercolor paper. And I could make an Ursula style, <laughs> a octopus style mermaid as well. Now let's collect up all of these lovely little mermaids. And I just want to show you some ways that I like to use them. I'm not a card maker myself. I, I'm an art journaler. I love to create in journals, in journals that I've made and the Jane Davenport journals. That's what this is in the background. My journals have watercolor paper in them and a canvas cover so that you can paint them yourself. I've used uh, my paint, of course. <laughs> <laughs> on there and just because I just plopped them on there how cute do they look so now I have to work out how I'm going to have these little mermaids on this cover because I think this is going to have to be but what I wanted to show you is how they go inside a journal just one idea because I'm sure you're going to come up with really gorgeous ideas this is a large vintage book that was falling apart that I found at a little street market in Paris and I have stripped the inside of it. I've kept all the pages, but uh, I've put in watercolor paper. On the left hand side, I've got some other die cuts, those Tentalicious tentacles. I just love those octopus tentacles. Mm, crazy about them. And I've got jelly plate prints from my little thin jelly plate, that beautiful jelly plate. And these backgrounds are all things that we created in my layer cake online workshop about backgrounds so that's what's going on there uh, that goldfish is a little vintage piece again i found it in paris uh, it's a little bit of victoriana scrapbooking and i've always felt this page needs something else and i think it needs a mermaid so i've decided i'm going to pop her there so i've taken out her middle her belly button brad and i'm going to 
drop them everywhere on the page. And I'm going to pull that one in the right color. And then I'm going to use my awl, put a little hole where I want her to be situated and then attach her. I'm going to live with her in my journal just with that one attachment. Because she's big, I could put in a couple of fasteners there for her, but let's start with the one. Uh, because it's just really me looking at my journals. So I don't have to worry about uh, people playing around with them too much. But if you're worried about it, that's what I'm saying. You could put maybe a couple of um, brads there to hold it in situ. But I wanted her to be able to really move around. I like her in that position. So I'm going to use my awl and place her. And just pop that paper fastener or brad just through and it's really it's quite discreet but I thought I could cover that up with another mermaid but first isn't that I just think that's rather adorable I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of that page I might add some text my art journal pages they evolve over time I've got pictures in there that I've created from Italy and in this journal for some strange reason I have many mermaids Maybe because I was writing a book about mermaids at the time. Um, oh, mermaid would look nice in that other lady's hair. But I've got scenes, I've got um, art prompts, all sorts of different things in there. But let's put a little mermaid here as well. So I've got lots to choose from. <laughs> and I can swap them around too. It only takes a couple of seconds to... Uh, swap the bodies and the tails with each other but I thought oh this is going to look good so I'm going to just do exactly the same process as I did for the last mermaid. So I'm really feeling this is a spot of fun and I'm really looking forward to seeing what other people come up with as well. But I do feel that a few mermaids might pop up in my journals like how cute's that? She's got mermaids on her mind this is like a drift net something you know like an underwater city happening in the background there oh that's what I love about piecing different elements together is you start to get ideas for what else these could mean and of course I don't have to use it all as one mermaid I can just have the torso and uh, play with any of the elements <laughs> this journal is crazy it's got a little bit of everything one of my favorite journals anyway I'm really loving this page but I think she needs a little bit of detail so I could use the stamps that come with them and just stamp the little face stamp the hair but I'm going to draw I'm going to use my finishing line pens so these are an archival quick drying ink it's very very nice and black and they've got all the different types of nibs in there. There's two microfines, there's all the brush nibs and some chisels. So I'm going to use microfine too and draw in some little details of the face. And this is the part of the video where I say, if you'd like to learn how to draw <laughs> faces, you can join me in my online workshops at janedavenport.com. And I've also added in some of my story time and paint over paint pens just to give a little bit of color in the eye, some white in the eye. I can go over those with a little bit more detail. I like that dark blue on her arm. I think I might chip into that, turn that into a tattoo. And I've just given a little bit of jewelry and a little bit of anatomical lines, just subtle little pieces. And for the second little mermaid, let's use the stamp for her face. There's three faces there. I love this one with the little dreaming eyes, the closed eyes. And then with my pen, I can add in any other little details that I want. I could add watercolor if I wanted. I can add, you can use any art supplies that you like on any paper that you like. The paper doll mermaids are so cute and so much fun. Uh, Spellbinders have done such a beautiful job with them. They still have that looseness of my work. And, and I think that allows more room to let you add yourself in there. There's also more 
of course, in my mermaid theme. There's the Bubble Palace die and stamp set. There's a little Happy Dolphin die. There are seashell stamps, sea kelp, and there's also some of my other die and stamp sets. This is the Mermaid Tail Swatch set, but you could use that Mermaid Tail with this set perhaps. I've also got my shell stamps, my beautiful Mermaid Scale dies, the tile set. You could use them maybe as a background. Oh, and there's also the Tentalicious ones. So many beautiful things. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you feel mermaidy.